Good afternoon and welcome to another webinar, another NAHT Discovery Education Pathway webinar, which we always entitle Advice for the Current Times, of course. And I hope you're well. I hope you're having a good week. And one more day and then it's the weekend. <laughs> so uh, during this discussion, which we, uh, we always say this, you know, we welcome, um, welcome your comments and so forth and your questions for our special guest, Guy Dudley. Uh, and obviously, uh, we've had uh, we've had Guy. We've been chatting to Guy on lots of these different webinars, and uh, always enjoy posing questions at him. And uh, he always bats them back brilliantly, actually, with very insightful, useful answers. So uh, do join in the conversation if you'd like to join in the discussion on social as well. Please do. We tend to use hashtag the whole teacher because we think that well, we're certain that Pathway supports the whole teacher, personal and professional development, as you know by now, I'm sure. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Pathway, please do visit our URL there, our website, uh, forward slash Pathway, and you can find out much more about it. Um, but today, as always, it's such a joy to welcome Guy Dudley, Head of Advice at the NAHT, been on the telephone to school leaders for many years now. Absolutely thrilled that Guy's able to join us. So it just remains for me to say, welcome, Guy. There you are. Ten hello, Andrew, minutes. and uh, hello, everybody. It's great to see you. Really good to have you with us again. Thank so you we're very going to have another one of our fireside chats where you're going to, I'm going to say very little and just leave, leave you to give us all the, all the thoughts and all the insight. Um, so why don't we kick off by just going through the agenda, if that's okay, Guy? Absolutely. Well, welcome, everybody. And um, I hope you enjoy this one. It's a slightly different approach for us, um, perhaps a little more lighthearted than the ones that we would normally do. It's our sort of end of year, end of academic year uh, webinar. Um, uh, I guess because you're listening um, and watching, uh, you've, uh, you're interested in the Pathway product. Uh, and some of you may know that it has a, a very much split into three parts, uh, the last of which is reflection. Um, so we're going to be concentrating a little bit on the reflection of the last 12 to 15 months. Not a big amount because we know that everybody is probably quite tired of talking about it and just looking forward to getting through the next 24 hours and then the next three weeks. Um, but then we'll hopefully nicely segue uh, onto uh, what we've called the summer staycation menu. Um, and you may you may wonder why we've got this on here. Well, I talked to I've spoken to tens of thousands of head teachers over the last eight to ten years. I also had a spell at the DFE for six years as well, so I spoke to many of them there. And one of the common themes that came through was that they never really had enough time to think about what they were going to do over the summer holiday because they'd been working so hard up to it um, that they'd almost sort of spent most of it recovering and the other half re re preparing for the, the, the autumn term. Uh, so we thought we might share some ideas, and Andrew and I will busk our way through uh, the menu. Um, but as, uh, as um, you've had a note there in our, our chat room, uh, please make any comments and any ideas that you would love, because this is by no means an exhaustive list uh, of ideas. And um, I've actually shared it with one or two uh, colleagues of mine at the NEHT, and they've uh, they've said it's spot on given the number of and nature of calls they're getting at the moment at uh, the NHT headquarters. Um, and then we're going to take you through our latest newsletter, um, which is our sixth and final for this year. Uh, it's just been produced. It's just been put on our uh, advice hub uh, section um, because there are one or two things that may be of interest to you in there. And during uh, the, the, the presentation, we'll refer back to some of the pieces of advice and information, advice and guidance that you'll typically see uh, on the Advice Hub uh, and in the newsletter as well. So we'll, we'll take you through this at a nice sort of steady pace, uh, but equally, we'll look at the, 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 there's nothing like looking at the product uh, when uh, we talk about it. So we'll, we'll do that um, with absolute pleasure. So... Um, reflections. Well, it's been a it's been a staggering year, hasn't it? I mean, you know, Boris Johnson was elected Prime Minister uh, on the twelfth of December, twenty nineteen. Uh, it, it seems an awful long time ago. Um, and for the first six weeks of his tenure, he managed to get us out of Europe, uh, and we signed the Brexit deal on the thirty first of January, two thousand. Uh, he then had another six weeks in power um, before uh, the media started cooking up a frenzy with these reports of 
a flu-like virus that was uh, em- originated in the Far East, as we understand. Um, but no one really thought anything of it, really, uh, until the World Health Organization declared it as a global pandemic on the 11th of March 2020, which took us all by surprise. And it's quite nice to sort of perhaps touch on those dates uh, as well. Um, and as you will all know, um, listening to, on this call, uh, this webinar, that uh, on the 20th of March last year, schools went into what effectively became known as lockdown, and they stopped effectively becoming schools uh, and became centres where children of certain categories could be uh, provided with uh, care uh, and welfare and being looked after, um, and I'm no doubt provided with some very uh, useful activities as well. But we all, every single one of us, including me, uh, my last day in the office at the NEHT in Hayward Heath, West Sussex, was the Monday the 16th of March, and we were sent home for a trial week, uh, and we didn't come back on the 17th. Um, so I had about an hour's notice to clear my desk. Um, uh, there was nothing in that personally for me, um, but uh, everyone had an hour to clear their desk, and um, I'm sure uh, it felt very much the same for you too. So we limped through that that, that, that year really, um, and and the government were really at a loss, uh, quite understandably, because they'd never managed a pandemic before. No government has ever managed a pandemic before. Um, and we were looking to others, as you know, France and Germany and Italy, um, countries that we would ordinarily benchmark our practices to, and they didn't have a clue either. Um, so we got to the end of the year. Um, pupils returned uh, in the autumn um, in most categories uh, and in most year groups. Um, pay and appraisal that would normally have dominated the autumn term uh, pretty much were agreed uh, with trade unions, um, almost as a sort of side event, really. Uh, didn't even really occupy uh, any of the headlines at the NEHT at that time, where by it would normally be the number one uh, topic uh, for the autumn term. Uh, and more, most school activity had to be adapted um, for for that period. Um, one of the things that, I'm, that Andrew will be doing while I talk uh, is guiding you through the product. Um, and one of the things that we did get a lot of uh, requests for were things like uh, remote uh, working and reasonable adjustments um, in the human resources tile. Um, so what you'll see there is, uh, I think it's the, the third or fourth, I uh, know it's the fifth document down. Um, you'll see there that we've got a document in the, in the advice hub, uh, talking about reasonable adjustments at school. So I think one of the beauties of this particular part of the presentation is that we're able to take you through a period of reflection uh, and also refer you back to the advice hub where you might see um, the, the typical sort of document uh, that you would find uh, in the advice hub. This, was, this one is uh, on reasonable adjustments. It's three pages long. Most of them are three or four pages long at the most. Most of them are set out in a Q and I type type of uh, format, um, and they tell you all you need to know about the topic uh, at the top of the page. So, if anyone wanted to know about reasonable adjustments, there you go. We also had a lot of calls about home and flexi schooling, um, and under curriculum, I think. Um, I don't want to lead Andrew on a, uh, there we go. Um, we've got a, a whole document on home and flexi schooling. Uh, now, normally home and flexi schooling would be uh, an activity that a school might entertain uh, during the normal course of events. But of course, this wasn't the normal course of events. It was the autumn term, but many parents um, took their children out of school uh, to provide homeschooling for, for them. And that was no reflection on schools whatsoever. Uh, that was more a reflection on um, the pandemic and, and the parental response to it. Um, so, again, we had that uh, there as well. I think then we turned the year. Um, and on the 4th of January, if you can think back that far, I can't. 
um, 4th of January, we, uh, we had an announcement for remote learning um, for everybody, um, uh, all bar certain categories of children, uh, of key workers, critical workers. Uh, and that was another irritation I'm sure you found, I did where the, the, even the titles of these things were being changed with every iteration of government advice. They, they started off as called, being called key workers, and then they became critical workers. Um, and they became critical workers when the government announced on the 4th of July that uh, most, if not all, children would be educated uh, from home. Um, but there was no statutory duty to do so. Um, they also announced a few days later on the 6th that all exams would be cancelled. Mm. Um, all SATs in primary settings, uh, all O-levels uh, and A-level GCSEs, everything scrapped, um, which, of course, threw a huge pile of work onto teachers uh, and school leaders as they had to turn their attention towards the uh, teacher assessment uh, grades. Um, and you know that that created an awful amount of anxiety also for pupils uh, and for parents, uh, as you can imagine, um, when your child is told, uh, when you are told as a parent that your children will not be nationally assessed uh, against the, the the sort of national criteria in the national curriculum, uh, but instead they're going to get teacher assessment grades. Um, some people actually thought that was a preferable way of going about assessing children's overall ability um, but then may have underestimated the workload to uh, to do that um, there was an awful lot of anxiety around um, you know that there's some figures around that you would have seen in the media of antidepressants going up in terms of prescriptions uh, it was an awful scene and, and I just think the NHT have been uh, pretty good uh, in responding to that and we'll refer to that back in the newsletter um, when we set out our, our recovery plan uh, for the government, uh, effectively doing a, a great deal of their work for them. And I think as we turned into the summer term, um, a lot of it went on to a lot of the uh, issues um, turned to recovery mm -hmm. and funding, um, the tags and Progress 8, um, and I think the end of year uh, issues as well. Um, and I think... Um, I think, Andrew, under, um, under safeguarding, under the safeguarding tile, uh, I think what near the top of the, near the top there, fourth one down, um, you'll see a piece there that I wrote um, on the back of the Ariane de Grande uh, concert um, that happened in uh, May 2017. Um, you don't need to uh, wonder what, what the rev uh, relevance of the relevance of this is however it is about supporting children at a time of crisis mm. um, and therefore although this episode was a, a, a particular one particular event uh, the principles behind this re remain very much the same yeah. uh, for children uh, uh, in primary and secondary se uh, settings but predominantly in primary a lot of whom would have been at that concert that night uh, I was actually in Manchester that night uh, on business uh, and uh, wrote it uh, overnight um, to ready to, for school leaders first thing in the morning. So, um, and it's been um, you know welcomed with uh, very warmly uh, this time around as well. Um, I don't know. Perhaps Andrew, you could switch to the newsletter um, yeah. because we've just produced our sixth and final newsletter for this year. Um, in fact, I think it went up this week or late last week. That's right. Um, and if we could just scroll down to the those sort of bold heading at the bottom there, mm -hmm. um, you can see that uh, we've provided you with the latest DfE guidance uh, to, to help you get to the finishing line uh, for, for on the 23rd of July, I guess, for most people. Um, you'll also see there a blueprint for education recovery, which is NAHT's proposal. Um, for uh, that went to the government that has uh, received a lot of warm uh, and comfortable plaudits. There's other issues there are around tags, Progress 8 and Ofsted and Off-Qual off, uh, updates, uh, as well as the well-being and mental health of pupils. And for those working in academies, uh, there's the brand new Academy Trust Handbook 
uh, out as well. There's also some other news there that might be of uh, interest to you. Um, there's been a lot of noise, Andrew, on social media and in the press about this additional um, uh, inset day. Um, in fact, I've had people, probably the most emails I've had um, about it, um, about international travel dilemmas if children are stuck overseas, and about sports days. Um, all the information is in there. Let me just touch on that additional inset day, though, because I, I, I would imagine people's ears have pricked up, uh, virtually ears have pricked up, uh, in, at the very mention of an additional inset day. The, the government announced... Uh, early in, they made a bit of a, uh, a fluff announcement at the beginning of December last year about an additional inset day that would have taken place on the 18th of December. And this was to support those uh, children and teaching staff and school leaders uh, through the test and trace, uh, test and track period, um, track and trace period rather, through the, the Christmas break. Uh, most schools didn't take it because there just wasn't enough time for them to organise it. So the DfE have very recently, last week, said that for those schools that haven't taken it, they can still take it this year, uh, but it has to be taken in this current academic year. Um, so uh, just to, to let people know, there is an additional inset day. It's completely voluntary, uh, so you don't have to take it, uh, and it's on a use it or lose it basis um, so that if you don't take it it doesn't carry forward into next year these newsletters are quite powerful because they highlight the sort of little things coming across the, the, the sort of news waves and news headlines between the webinars and on a daily basis um, so you know some of that may be new news to you some of it may be old news but we try and mop up, mop up everything at the NHT from every source um, that uh, we can uh, possibly get into a, a, a readable newsletter. This is eight pages long. I read it. It took me 16 minutes to read, two minutes a page. So it's a sort of cup of coffee read. Uh, and of course, we put the, the contents at the front. So if you want to go to something quickly, you know that um, the Academy Trust Handbook is uh, 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 number seven in the newsletter. So these are, are really helpful things. And um, a lot of people have been logging on and uh, making sure that they get the most up-to-date news. One of the things I was going to end on on this particular part um, was well-being. It's a hugely discussed topic, we all know. No one's really successfully determined it uh, or, or a definition of it, a universally acceptable definition. Um, but really, you know, what it means is effectively doing the things that allow you to recharge. Um, and I think, you know, that's possibly the best way I can describe it. Um, for some people, that's for activists among you, amongst you, that may be skiing or, or water slides or, you know, something, horse riding. For others, it may be uh, sitting in your garden or on your balcony um, with a bottle of uh, intoxicating liquor. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever makes you uh, be feel better, feel good about yourself and helps you recharge your batteries uh, for the next challenge. Um, and just before we go on to this section, Andrew, I would say that after eight years of talking to school leaders, yeah. one of their biggest regrets at the end of the year is them saying, I didn't make the most of my summer holiday. Mm, uh, so what, true. what I had of it. So um, we all know, and uh, you know, I speak to Andrew, you as an ex-school leader, um, that people, school leaders especially, and, and a lot of people working in schools, don't uh, they don't have time off in half terms. Well, you can't switch it off. No, you worry about it. And and Christmas and Easter are too short because the first week you're you're sort of mm -hmm. coming down from a high, and the second week you're winding yourself up for the return. So the summer break is is fairly sort of sacrosanct, isn't it? It's fairly sacred mm. in the sense that you've got time to, to, to sort of come down from the high you've been on for the last 15, 18 months. You've got time to refresh and, and build up for your, uh, the autumn term. But there's so probably two or three weeks in the middle where you think, what on earth am I going to do? I haven't had time to even think about what I could do. 
Mm. Uh, and of course, with current restrictions that we all hope are lifted on the 19th, but there's no guarantee, um, you, know, you, you may be limited in what you can do. So we've come up with a few summer staycation ideas uh, for you uh, and hope that you can take these away and perhaps discuss them with your family. Uh, every listener on this call is going to get a copy yep. of these. So don't feel you need to uh, cut and paste or, or worry that you're going to forget about them. Every listener is going to get a copy of these ideas. Uh, it's not exhaustive, but they're the ideas that I thought from doing some research in this area for head teachers in particular, um, that uh, they would be particularly helpful. Um, you don't have to do all of them. This isn't a timetable. Uh, <laughs> these are They're not sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> these are simply ideas yep. that you can take away uh, and that I'm sure you'll probably think I know them all, but I'm pretty much sure if you're honest with yourself, when we get to the end, not half of them would have crossed your mind. So um, I think if we can go through them, and I've put them into categories and... By all means, you know, Andrew and I can sort of touch on these together and we'd love to hear your comments. Yeah, we would. Um, or if, if there's anything else to it, because we'll, yeah. we'll probably turn this into a piece of uh, permanent advice that we, we can stay on there for... Uh, yeah, stay on our in yeah. So, you know, th these are broken into sort of small sections. Uh, don't worry, it's not death by PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> put a picture in there. Uh, we've made some just bullet points, but I think... When you're at home, uh, these are some of the things you do. And the one I like the most is make a summer playlist. Um, I don't know who's listening and I don't know how old you are. Um, but one thing we do have in common, we all like music. And with with technology now, it's so easy to make a playlist. Um, and I just think it's a, it, it's a wonderful idea to have uh, to make your summer playlist. And, and perhaps mm, that might keep you going in the autumn. Yeah. Um, well, it helps trigger the memories when you're back at school, doesn't it? It does. It does. Absolutely. Nice um, and pick some old and pick some new. Uh, I'm not going to read the, each of these out. You can all see them, hopefully. Uh, you can all read them. Uh, and of course, cooking and food is always going to feature uh, in my household and I, I expect in yours, Andrew, as well. Absolutely. Um, keeping your daily journal is not a bad idea either. Um, thank you, Alison, for your queen all the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good taste. Good taste. <laughs> and some other things I think that, that um, you could do here, um, you know, some people, I think there's a plethora, aren't there, of gardening programs yeah. on uh, more than I've ever remembered. <laughs> um, and I think, again, it's time that you could nurture some indoor plants, grow a herb garden. And, you know, I used to have a flat with a balcony and I grew a herb garden uh, just on the balcony. It, it's very doable. Um, and of course you can, Invite friends over to eat the food you've cooked, the, the, the drinks you've made, perhaps, uh, and um, put your playlist on, summer playlist on. Um, so I think that's quite a nice idea to, to, uh, to take those home as well. Andrew, if we could shift to the, of course. the next one. Um, there are a couple of, couple of interesting ones here. Um, Perhaps the, the latter, the, the last two aren't as interesting as the first two. One of the things that um, struck me was that, you know, part of a holiday is, part of the fun of a holiday is actually planning it. Mm. You know, where are you going to go? Uh, most people won't be able to travel internationally this year, and it may not be your desire to travel internationally. Um, but it may be good fun to try and book your next holiday in terms of thinking where to go uh, and what to do. Um, one of the things that also came up in discussions with uh, NHT members was this notion of a digital detox. Mm -hmm. um, not as painful as it sounds, folks, <laughs> uh, but it is very much having a break away from the phone, yep. the laptop, um, and perhaps seeing how far you can go if you've got partners or, or family members, uh, having a competition to sort of see, right, how far can we go with this uh, and take and make it a little bit of fun. But, I think I, li I do like the idea of a digital detox. Um, difficult to achieve, but probably quite good fun. Absolutely. Um, and again, one of the things that we've, we've and I know that um, we've, we've got, we've had a, a couple of good sessions uh, with one of my colleagues on the discovery 
uh, program and, and pathway in particular about sleep mm. and recharging of batteries. Mm. Um, and if we skim over the first, one of the things that um, I remember advising a head teacher about 10 years ago, uh, who's having real trouble um, sleeping uh, and with her energy, um, was when I asked her about her life away from the school, uh, what time she went to bed, what she mm-hmm. ate. Um, and it's incredible when I've, I've asked people over the years, it's not about the school and it's not about the work, it's about what they do at home. Uh, and her bed was about 20 years old. Um, and I think most people would recognise that after about 10 to 15, your bed needs replacing, or certainly the mattress. And uh, I gave her this piece of advice and she took it and she rang me back about two months later to say, I've never slept better. Wow. And of course, that's, that's helped me reach out. And it was really something, something like that, Andrew, that is, yeah. is just sort yeah, of so, seems so <clears throat> trivial. But we don't think about it, do we? We, we, no. we forget. Um, and sleep. And, um, you know, my colleague who, who does the course on this, uh, recharging your batteries, I mean, he absolutely swears that, yeah, you know, if, if we get enough sleep at night and we're able to recharge our batteries, uh, we can pretty much cope with everything and anything. Uh, but good sleep requires on a good bed um, and pillows and bedding. Um, and this isn't brought to you in association with any particular bed company. Uh, <laughs> this is simply some good old fashioned yep. advice that um, a lot of people just ignore. Um, and if you've got some outside space, um, you know, you can rent a hot tub. Uh, one of our neighbors has done that. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's rightly made me very jealous. Um, you can connect with your patio. Mm-hmm. Uh, outdoor space, and I'm assuming that some of you have got some outside uh, space. Um, do those DIY jobs, and one of the things that they image there that always reminds me of summer, and it's perhaps most one of the most iconic iconic sort of images of summer, uh, in my opinion, is someone on a hammock. Oh, I'd love um, that. I love one. Everyone says that. Everyone oh. says I'd love a hammock, and, and yet they never do. No. Um, <laughs> But don't worry if you don't build one. You can always you can buy hammock kits. Really? Uh, yeah, buy really? hammock kits, and and they're very wow. affordable. Thirty, forty pounds. Really? Uh, well, when you look at the image, they're they're basically bits of wood. Yeah, they are. With string yeah. them in a, and a sheet in between them. There's That's there's right. um, there's not a much, <laughs> there's not much intrinsic value to a hammock, um, <laughs> but there's an awful lot of value to be had oh, in a hammock. Huge. Um, <laughs> Other things that we, we, we came across in our search was um, making a birdhouse or feeder or both. And again, you can buy kits for these. You don't have to go out and uh, do a carpentry course. Um, uh, and of course, you can bird watch as well. If Check out the RSPB yeah. uh, sites near you or, or areas of natural beauty. Um, there's a lot of them. Um, and one of the things that I particularly enjoy that I never thought I would uh, was having a pond. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we've got, uh, I think we've got about 50,000 frogs spawn in there at the moment. And if the birds don't get them, we'll have 50,000 frogs. Um, so, but it's an, an incredibly, uh, peaceful way to pass the day, uh, looking at a pond and, and just checking up on it every day. It's, uh, it's very therapeutic, very therapeutic. Um, I wonder how many of you. Um, and comments would be welcome. I mean, I wonder how many of you really know where you live. Um, I'm still discovering parts of my town, um, which is Shoreham on the coast in uh, West Sussex. Um, And I've been here for two years, and I'm still discovering bits of it that I never knew about. Mm. Um, And it's an old town. It's an old fishing village, as you can imagine, with a Norman church. I've never yet been in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to do this list uh, and go into that church yeah, uh, over, the week, over the weekend, uh, possibly. Um, take a walk. Um, if you've got a dog, take the walk, as I'm sure you do. And if you haven't, you can take someone else's with their permission. Um, or you can even, if you love dogs but don't own one and would love to take one for a walk, you can even contact your local dogs trust, uh, mm-hmm. volunteer to take one for a walk. Um, go to a farmer's market. 
Um, oh, love a farmer's market. <clears throat> and, and the reason why I suggest love that it. is not only can you buy some lovely stuff, but you get to know that the areas around you, that there are actually a lot of local producers in your area. Mm. Um, it's, it'll be a fascinating, uh, it's all, I'm always fascinated by farmers markets, yeah, me too. um, and where they grow, uh, where they grow their stuff. Um, and of course, pick your own fruit. We've probably all done it as children. Um, but how many of us have done it as an adult? For a long time. Um, and it's a, it's good fun. It's good fun. Um, uh, speaking of adults, perhaps if you're past the, 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 the sort of pick your own stage of your life. Um, you can go to a vineyard. Um, there are vineyards everywhere in England. Um, a colleague, colleague of mine went to one in Leeds recently. Um, is there nothing in Yorkshire that isn't grown or made? Um, <laughs> probably not. Um, but uh, yeah, she brought down a bottle of uh, wine last summer made in Leeds um, and wow. you know, took everybody by surprise. Yeah. Um, and an animal sanctuary is a, is a great day out as well, uh, or half a day out. Uh, again, spending time with animals, if you like animals, um, is a really good way to, um, you know, to spend some time, it really is. So once you've done all that, you can build up to this if you're feeling a little more adventurous. Plenty of outdoor live music events, and there certainly will be more, hopefully, after the 19th of July. Yeah. There's nothing quite like a live music event. Um, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of people that have never been to one, um, which isn't surprising, um, but I think there's nothing quite like uh, a live music event. Um, I don't play golf, although I have a set of golf clubs, um, you know, all the gear, no idea type of uh, man. Um, but I have been to our local golf range. Yeah. Uh, and if you haven't, it's really good fun. Hmm. Uh, it sounds as like if you've been, Andrew. Oh yes, and I love it. And uh, my enthusiasm is is uh, it grows every year. But unfortunately, my my skill seems to, to seems to fall. But uh, no, it's not me enjoying it. I love it. Really enjoy it. It's a good yeah. way. Very affordable. Very inexpensive. Very you know, normally a few quid for a, a fifty or a hundred bulls, and you can whack them to your to kingdom come. But you have to pace yourself because that's the mistake I used to make when I went to the golf range. Because, of course, if you're playing an actual golf match, you've got a good walk in between. Yes. Uh, whereas when you're on a golf range, it's just bang, bang, bang. So uh, pace yourself. Pace it yourself. can be over very quickly if you don't. <laughs> yeah. um, for the very adventurous amongst you, you know, there's zorbing and geoca uh, geocaching. Zorbing is where you step into these huge rubber clear balls and oh, launch right. yourself down a hill. I, although I've seen them in Shoreham on the river here, in Ad, uh, the Ada River, uh, people zorb on the water. Really? Um, wow. Which looks great fun. Um, and geo, sorry, geocaching is where you're effectively playing this sort of uh, game of finding treasure, yeah. that, uh, little treasure pieces that other people uh, have found using a, a particular app uh, on your phone. Yeah, that's uh, great fun. Basically, a walk with a purpose. It's a, a sort of like a treasure hunt walk. Um, terrific fun. In plain English. Um, and then there's, of course, you know, the usual things, horse riding, go-karting, um, a supervised uh, boat trip. I think boat trips are wonderful. I mean, they're, they're, even if you don't like water, I mean, you know, if, you, if you're lucky to live near the lakes um, or even, you know, plenty of inland areas have reservoir, man-made reservoirs and lakes, uh, next to sailing clubs um, and you know I just think anything to do with water uh, can be terribly relaxing uh, as, as long as it's not go-karting yeah uh, and then we've got the usual things here uh, a road trip start small um, a steam train is always most steam trains only run in good weather uh, so hopefully we'll have some of that and um, I did one last year in Wales and it was just magical going through mm. the Brecon Brecon Beacons on a steam train, two years ago, uh, rather. Um, go for a bike ride. Um, you know, one of these things that uh, you think, gosh, if it's too much for me, and a higher one with power. Um, yeah, that's I've, super. I've, I've never ridden one with uh, battery power, but I, I've told they're, they're pretty good, good um, for the fair weather cyclists as well. 
And book an experience. Well, what do I mean by this? Well, you know, you can, um, if you go into certain websites and, and you can just put in book an experience, you can book all sorts of things. Um, I've just bought a, a flight experience for my sister where she will fly a Boeing 747 for an hour wow. um, in a simulator. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's a, an hour of, of great fun. And uh, it's one of the two of those things, you know, drive a classic sports car, drive a Formula 2 car around a racetrack. Make uh, memories. And, you know, yeah. these, things, these things will only ever be done in the summer holidays. Um, and you have to sort of wonder how many summer holidays there are, you know, rest, uh, for the rest of your career. There won't be that many. Uh, mm-hmm. One a year. Yeah. Um, a few more before we bring this to an end. Uh, a language. Um, photography is always a straightforward one because most of us have got a camera, if not all of us. Um, I noticed near to where I live, there's a chocolate making school. I haven't visited it yet because I'm such a poor tourist in my own town, but um, uh, it certainly does appeal to me um, going to the chocolate making class. And of course, you can take away and eat um, what you have made or, or whatever shape you've managed to create. Uh, during the actual session. A few more uh, challenging ones there of language and musical instrument. Well, i tell you what my wife bought me earlier this year, Guy, just seeing the slide mm. reminded me. She, I've always loved woodwork. I'm not very good at it, but I've always just right. loved sort of dabbling around with little tools and things. She bought me a, day, a day's lesson, or basically a day in the company of a cabinet maker. Right. So I just spend the day with him, and I haven't, I haven't booked it yet. I, I must, must get around to it. Uh, you spend a day in their company, and you just learn from them. Mm. Uh, I can't wait. I think that's going to be a terrific, terrific mm. thing to do. And you can do that anywhere, actually. There's lots that do that. Absolutely. Yeah, a friend of mine's going on a bricklaying course in July. Oh, wow. Um, because he wants to learn how to build a yep. wall in his garden. Yeah. Um, and then, finally, we thought, given that we're in the business of learning... Um, being school workers and leaders. Um, there's a few ideas that you might want to consider. Um, getting first aid trained, uh, never a bad thing to do. Um, knitting, crochet for the less adventurous of you. Um, Simon is the, um, some of you may have spoken to him actually, Simon Thomas, uh, who are, who's our solicitor. Uh, at the NHT, always busy. Uh, I work very closely with him. He's probably my closest colleague. And um, that's how he winds down, uh, fishing. Um, And of course, you can do it anywhere, rivers, seas, lakes, um, privately, publicly, Um, far more accessible than one might think. Mm -hmm. Um, But for him, he's a solicitor, uh, makes lots of decisions on a fairly day-to-day basis, certainly makes lots of judgments, um, then he finds that an incredibly relaxing way of slowing down. You may have seen the um, Bob Mortimer. Oh, it's uh, terrific. And uh, Lovely series. Paul Whitehouse. Paul Whitehouse series, where they just go fishing. Um, and I think you, you probably sort of draw some of the inspiration from that as well. Very zen. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then there's a few other things there. Um, the things that people perhaps most associate with well-being, um, and you know, I've I've, in, I've called the, the the slide title there quite careful. It's not indulgence to go for any of these treatments or sessions or activities. Um, it's what you do to look after yourself. It is, uh, and feel good at the same time. Uh, and if you know you look after yourself and feel good. Uh, you're more likely to want to do more of it. Um, so any of those, highly recommended. And I think this is the final slide coming up. Um, no, penultimate slide. Um, one of the things that head teachers, in particular, because that's who I talk to, so it's my only reference group, Andrew, uh, are not great at because they're so busy during the day, doing their day job is sorting their finances out yeah. and their pension. Yeah. Um, and again, one of the things that I would do, really strong, strongly advise people to do is grasp that pension nettle uh, mm. over the summer holiday. It's not difficult. 
um, especially as you're all in, probably most of you are in members of the Teachers Pension Scheme. Um, and we can support you with the NHT uh, as well. And we'll have documents going on to our advice hub about the pension scheme uh, as well over the summer. Um, the other thing there that people, the, the, the last two items, um, I'd like to just quickly underline before the last slide, book an eye test. So, so important, especially as we're now spending far more of our time in front of a screen. Um, and I think the other reason it's so important, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, when you're, uh, and I'm no expert, so you know, you're going to hear it from a, a sort of um, chap who sort of reads the, the, the sort of Google and talks to his optician, as I did recently. When you're born, your eyes are round. They're completely, perfectly spherically round. Uh, as you age, they become rugby ball shaped. Really? Um, until you reach your 40s. And your 40s stroke um, 50s is when your eyesight is likely to change. Uh, and ironically, it's likely to get better or stabilize. Um, so it's really important to book an eye test, uh, certainly as most school leaders will fall into that age category. And when I say get your health checked, I mean it. It's not, uh, this isn't a luxury. Most GPs, most GPs will participate in the NHS Well Man and Well Woman scheme, right. where you can book yourself an appointment free of charge, and you go along and you have some basic health checks done. Great. Um, so blood pressure, uh, body mass, uh, height, weight. Um, I think they might do one with. I think they did one with blood, uh, a blood test, to send it off of diabetes. It really is worth it. We had one done, um, uh, not at the NHT, but in my previous employer. And it was life-changing for two people. Um, and that was out of 100. Um, and life-changing in a good way. Yeah. Uh, in that they were advised to start taking uh, a particular course of medicine that would have meant that had they not taken it, their lives would have been certainly a lot shorter. Um, so it really is, and these, as I said, these are NHS checked uh, checks organised through your GP. So quick visit to your GP uh, and you can get, get that underway. Absolutely. And folks, this is the last slide. Um, try and put a, pl a plan in place if you can. I know it's you work 38, 39 weeks of the year to a timetable. Um, but I, I guess having some sort of plan of what you're going to do, and that's why it's good, as we suggested on slide one, keeping a log, keeping a journal, um, that you can effectively try and plan some of these activities in. Remember, it's okay to do nothing. Um, you know, doing nothing is something that lots of people spend a lot of time uh, achieving the art of, but you know, it really is okay to do nothing at all. And Andrew and I were discussing uh, the other day a couple of films that um, we'd recommend you to watch. Mm. Uh, well, do you want to share yours, Andrew? I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin. Oh, it was Christopher Robin with you and McGregor. Yeah. My goodness me, yes. A salutary watch. Really worth watching. A beautiful film. And, it and if there's ever a film that, that sort of, yeah. I suppose, yeah. boils down what's, what's important in life. Oh, doesn't it? It's one of the, it's that film, isn't it? Yeah, really. Uh, I'm watching uh, with my daughter, she kept yeah. nagging me to watch it over a period of time, and eventually I said, "Okay, I'll watch it." And I sat and realised why she'd been asking me to watch it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, th there's a few things here that I would sort of say you you must do on this whole staycation list, um, uh, and I would say watching one of two of these two films, Christopher Robin, mm. uh, with Ewan McGregor. Yeah. And my favourite film, I think possibly of all time, oh. but again, it's not. It's this isn't about my favourite film. It's about my favourite film that gives you hope in human nature, doesn't it? Uh, it's a film about hope and achieved ambition. Um, and if you like Toby Jones, I think his name is. Yeah, he's terrific. The actor who he's plays uh, the, the main character. Um, and if anyone's a Stoke City fan, they'll love it even more. But I think Marvellous and Christopher Robin, if there are two must-watch films over the summer, uh, those are the two that you really must watch. You will <laughs> not regret it, and you'll be thinking about them way well into the autumn term and beyond. 
Um, And just finally from me, I hope this has been a helpful session. Um, People tell me it has. Um, So um, it's just enjoy every day, folks, and um, enjoy your very, very well-deserved break. And I'll see you again in August. Thank you so much, Guy. That was that was a treat. And we will we will tick off these things on the list. We really will. Great. I'll be checking. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, that was that was delightful as always. And we're going to see Guy again uh, on the 24th of August uh, for advice for the current times. And of course, given the timing of that one, that will be absolutely focused on preparing for the new year and uh, how to sort out and prioritize your job list in September. Guy's very, very good at doing that, at, at helping us organize our very long job list uh, on the 1st of September. So we thought, let's go for the week before and let's uh, let's get organised. So uh, so that'll be a really good one, actually, and it'll give us lots of little heads up of different dates and deadlines and various things that are coming up in the autumn term. So uh, join us for that on the 24th. It'll be the same time again, I'm sure, 4 o'clock, which is, uh, please join us for that. And obviously, if you'd like to find out any more about Pathway, then uh, my colleague has been sharing uh, sharing the links during this session. And very quickly, because I know a few people have been asking actually, so all of these different tiles, many of which, or all of which have uh, dozens and dozens, dozens of uh, different PDF articles within them. This is one of them, HR, as you can expect, HR is very extensive, because when I was a school leader, I certainly spent a lot of my time on HR, understandably. But uh, anyway, so this is where all the different PDFs are. You can download them and so forth. And uh, that's just one of many tiles, all of which contain all these different advice pieces. This is in the reflection section of Pathway. And just in case you're not aware, because there may still be some people who are not aware of uh, what the Pathway program is, and I'm not gonna just fall into 20 minutes of trying to sell this, but it's essentially a new online program for professional development and personal development too. And the personal development consists of a motivation guide, a guide to motivation, where you're encouraged to understand the nature of motivation, what it is and what it isn't, and how it feels when you have it and when you don't, and what to do about when you lack motivation and what is it in your job that's demotivating you. We ask you to create your own motivation plan as part of that course. We then have a skills audit where it's divided into two different types, tip based on the teacher standards, and another based on some leadership skills and competencies, 14 of them that we've identified working with lots of experienced school leaders and recruitment consultants and uh, uh, professors who lecture in MN school leadership and so forth. So different school skills audits where you actually give yourself an honest appraisal and you can keep coming back to it and change it as your career progresses. And then a career map where you're given an opportunity to write down the roles and goals that you have in the years ahead and your additional skills and interests that we all love to do where we bring added value to school not just the professional role but all those extra clubs and things how are you going to grow those in the years ahead and also some health and well-being goals just to make sure that you uh, you stay healthy and you've got those targets as well for your for your health and well-being and that's part of the orientation and then we move to navigation which is where we contain all these different online courses and this is where the kind of the professional development side kicks in the cpd or as i call it cpe continuous professional empowerment and this is where we have a long long list alphabetized list of different online courses many 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 different courses here each of which requires a good number of hours uh, maybe half a day if you maybe a ppa afternoon something like that um, so lots of different uh, lots of different professional development courses here with more being added each year and of course it consists of uh, a film uh, an introduction you read the introduction you watch the film in this case it's with the brilliant dr deborah kidd on curriculum design and enrichment and then you always ask some i've just written fake answers in here but you're asked some questions for reflection and then so you progress through every course with lots of reading to do another film to watch a round table discussion in this case about about a curriculum then you read a, a thought piece a piece of academic writing with a bibliography some recommended reading and so forth and then questions for reflection each time and then you work all the, that was one of the units you work all the way through the different units watching these really engaged engaging films, uh, roundtable discussions and so forth, and then keep answering those questions for reflection. And in this little box here, you can write one line of text or you could write a 20,000 word thesis if you wanted to. And it forms part of your professional learning journal. And we have uh, 20, 22 courses, no, 21 courses at the moment with the motivation guide, that's 22. And with another one within the reflection section, which is what you've been listening to today, we have both the advice hub, 
which is obviously lead authored and series edited by uh, by Guy Dudley, but also this unique well-being program, which I must tell you about, by Professor Tim O'Brien and his writing partner, Dr. Dennis Guiney, both very experienced teachers, senior leaders, and also uh, lecturers in human uh, development, uh, human psychology, adolescent uh, psychology. And they've written this most incredible course on uh, understanding your own well-being, and navigating and traversing the emotional landscape. Again, just like all the other courses, films to watch, thought pieces to read, lots of roundtable discussions, and it's a very, very enlightening course to help you understand what this business of well-being actually means. Uh, very empowering course. And then, of course, as you've heard today, the most uh, uh, brilliant advice hub where you'll find all these new different uh, advice pieces constantly being uploaded into the platform. So I think if you look at this in the round, I think it's a very, very different approach to CPD. And it isn't one course, it's multiple different courses. And this is where the advice hub is housed. So uh, I hope that's answered your questions. And I hope this has been a useful, uh, a useful little webinar for you. Do get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, I think my colleague has been sharing different contact details all the way through. Uh, yep, book a free chat, no obligation. Uh, we would just love to hear from you. You can uh, go onto our website. You can put in uh, a number of uh, teachers that you might like to purchase this for, and you'll see the discounts kicking in for multiple purchases and also for NEH team members, of course, also uh, earn a significant discount by virtue of being part of the NEH team. So well worth a look. Well worth a look. I hope this has been helpful. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm going to follow some of guys, some of guys' advice as soon as I possibly can and start looking after my health and well-being. <laughs> I hope you do too. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much indeed for joining.